Hello. This is the story of the Y chromosome haplogroup J, reconstructed by the ancient geographic population structure ancient GPS that predicted the migration routes of the haplogroups based on high quality, well localized ancient DNA data. The advantage of this approach is that it uses actual data compared to reconstructions based solely on modern day data and goes back thousands of years. Here we do have evidence of the actual ancient haplogroups derived from ancient skeletons. The ancestral lineage of haplogroup J, a genetic marker found in modern human population, traces back to haplogroup F, part of the broader haplogroup CF. These genetic branches emerged around 70,000 years ago in Africa, making significant milestone in human evolution. Haplogroup IJ, believed to have emerged 50 to 60,000 years ago, represents a crucial divergence point, giving rise to both haplogroups I and haplogroup J. Haplogroup J itself is estimated to have originated approximately 45,000 to 35,000 years ago, marking a pivotal period in the ancient migration and diversification of human populations. This period marked the end of the Neanderthals in Eurasia and specifically in the Levant, where the last Neanderthal went extinct some 40 to 50,000 years ago. Not that it matters for our story about the J people, because the Neanderthals belong to the basal haplogroup A, somewhere up here. But the Neanderthals out of the way, the Jays had one less thing to worry about as they were seeking food and shelter from the wild animals. The other things to worry about was the Ice Age, which 40,000 years ago was still in full scale all over Europe. We don't know where Jays were at that time, but it is likely that they were in the Middle East, where the weather was slightly warmer, because the first time we see them is around 12,000 BC, when they first appear in three sites. First in Turkey, then in southern France, and finally in Iran. These sites are too remote to infer migration, but the first J migrant moved from Iran to Turkey around 7800 BC, perhaps to help with the construction work at Gopi Tepe, which is where the very first J popped up. Gopi Tepe is a site of the world's oldest known megaliths, and those two J's were right there in time to help in its construction. The site consists of massive stone pillar arranged in circular pattern, some reaching up to 16 feet in height and weighing several tons. This structure predated the advent of agriculture and settled societies. We don't know exactly what its purpose was. It may have served a ceremonial or ritualistic site, or perhaps it was a communal gathering place for a seasonal event. We have no records of J for some 2,000 years, but then around 5,500 BC, Js that made it to Europe began to migrate. And they're doing just that for another 2,000 years, switching Italy and the Balkans to participate in the Neolithic Revolution, that by now reached Southern Europe. At 3,800 BC, the Middle Eastern J2 continued to migrate around the Black Sea, sharing the fruits of the agricultural revolution to construct their settlements, and in the Far East, at 3000 BC, the first J1 appeared in Mongolia. 400 years later, two J2s of the Corded Ware culture migrated to where Naples would be constructed a few years later. Between the years 2500 and 1000 BC, the Js, which we already know were in the Levant, started to increase their activity. We see a J settling in Jericho, one of the most ancient cities in the world, which by that time was fully constructed, and then J1, who was probably Canaanite Jebusi, migrated to the, Jerusalem, to the Judean mountains right when Jerusalem was constructed. Then a whole bunch of J2s moved from West Syria to the East in 1500 BC to the area of Ugarit, where they would be joined by a Jerusalemite J1, perhaps to help with the tribal work. The ancient city of Ugarit thrived during the Late Bronze Age. It was a bustling trade hub connecting diverse cultures from Mesopotamia to Egypt. The clay tablets archive found there offers a fascinating glimpse into the daily life in the ancient Near East. These tablets were inscribed in Ugaritic, a language related to Hebrew, which would shed light on everything from commerce to religion and even influence the development of alphabetic writing system. There is a high similarity between certain Ugaritic texts and passages found in the Hebrew Bible, particularly in poetic compositions such as the Psalm and prophetic literature. This connection suggests a shared cultural and linguistic heritage between the inhabitants of Ugarit and the ancient Israelites, influencing biblical literature and enriching our understanding of religious 
and literary traditions of the ancient Near East. The genetic data demonstrate this through the migrations of Israelites to Ugarit. After the exile of the ancient Israelite tribe, known as the Ten Last Tribes of Israel, we no longer see Jays in Israel, except for one Jay that left Jerusalem around 900 AD. At 100 BC, most of the J2 activity was in Europe, with the J2s reaching the Roman Empire. In 280, we see Jays from around the Black Sea and the Balkans arriving in England for the first time. There is a lot of Jay activity in Germany in the 9th century, some hundred years after the large cities were constructed, and in the 10th century, J2s finally appearing in Scandinavia. Today, the genetic legacy of the J Hapa groups live on in the descendants of those ancient migrants. The limited availability of ancient DNA data allow for the telling of only part of the story of J-migrants. However, even with those pieces, with the help of ancient GPS, we can recreate the migration story of the j hapa groups. We can only hope that with time, we can add more pieces to this puzzle. For additional reconstructions of hapa group migration history, please share and subscribe.